Here are the different types of systems of equations that you can solve on the HP 50G using different methods. So let's start with the one up top and we'll work our way down. So when you only have one unknown, let's just make that equation. You see this letter up here? That's your independent variable. And I'll just show you where you can find that, where it's defined, is it's in mode cas, and you can change this if you want. It's easiest to leave it as x. So I'm gonna go back here and back this up. Now if you go left shift solve, and just press this, uh, this solve on the far right, it's gonna throw an error because you didn't define what you were solving with respect to. But if I go undo and go back here, if you, if you go solve, it knows, okay, I'm gonna solve with respect to this variable up here and it's gonna spit out a couple answers. The alternative is, let's say we're not using this independent variable, you know, for some reason, you wanna use something that's meaningful to you, maybe it's y. How you would solve this is if you would put y on the stack and then you would press this solve. And it would go, oh, I'm solving with respect to y and give you these answers. Um, if you don't want them in, you know, exact mode like this, you can see up here, this is equals. So that means it's an exact mode. If I go right shift undo, I can go right shift and then enter pretty much the same time. So you go boom. And then you, if you look up here, it, this changed from an equals to a squiggly line. And now when we go solve, it'll give these to us in specific numbers. So that's the first one. Then we're gonna do a linear system. So once you have your linear system defined like this, what you wanna do is you wanna put it in, into a array. So first put three in the stack and then go to catalog. And then if you wanna to go to array, the, the fastest way to do it is if you go right shift and then zero. So you press this little arrow. That'll take you to everything that begins with an arrow and then arrays right there. So put everything into an array. And then after you do that, you wanna put your, uh, your unknowns onto the stack and also put them into an array. So now we have our unknowns and our equations. What we can do, if we go left shift, symbolic solve, and then we press linear solve. And if we do that, it'll say, oh, these are the solutions, x, y, and z. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, now let's do polynomials. After you have your three equations, this is pretty much the same method. Now this isn't gonna work every time. Sometimes it'll say this is an irreducible expression or it'll say I can't factor it or it'll, it'll but if, if it works, it's the best thing to do. This is very much the same thing. You have your equations and then you have your unknowns. Left shift, symbolic solve. But now instead of you using linear solve, you're gonna solve with respect to what you put on the stack, right? So you're gonna use this solve on the far right here. If you do that, it's gonna give you all the solutions and there's lots of solutions, right? So there's probably gonna be four sets. And there's gonna be this set here. And then there's gonna be this set here. And then there's gonna be another set. And then there's gonna be one more set, of that set up at the top. Um, I've noticed that it is important to be in exact mode for this. If I try to do the exact same thing in approximate mode, it tends to give me errors. It shouldn't, and I don't know if that's a, just a consequence of this emulator here, but yeah, it, if I press this, it's gonna say not an exact system when I'm in approximate mode. If I go out of approximate mode and press solve, it'll solve it. So you will wanna be in exact mode for this. I don't know what this next style of equation is, but these aren't polynomials, but there's something. This method I'm about to show you is, is basically just algebra. It's solving for one thing, substituting into the other thing, then solving that thing, and then going back to the original equation. So with two equations, it's not that bad. Once you start to get on, once you get over three equations, it's, it's doable, but over that, it's gonna be a real pain. If you can help it, I, I'm not a huge fan of this, but it, it works, it's just not ideal. So first we solve this equation with respect to x, and then I have to, you have to back up a copy of this equation because we want to use that later. So then you take what you, the, the equation you just solved and then you go right shift algebra and then you substitute that into this equation and then you solve this equation with respect to y and you get two solutions for y and then you take again we should back that up and then you take your new y solutions and then again you go back and you substitute that into this equation and there you have it you have your two possible x values and your two possible y values. And it's up to you to figure out which one goes with which. This one, it's just a mess. Um, you're only gonna get one solution and it's just gonna be the first solution that the calculator finds. So with a solution like this where it's just gonna be a nightmare to solve and even if you try to do what we do here, which is you know solve this one with respect to something and then substitute it in here, it, it'll it'll throw errors. It'll say, oh, this you know is an irreducible solution or it, it'll just give you problems. So if what you need is just a, a, a set of answers, a set of numbers that meet the equations, what you can do is you can put them into an array, 
like before, put in your variables, and then you give the computer a first guess at what the answer might be. And then you put that into an array. Uh, if, you, if you do actually have an idea of, oh, this should be a big number, this should be a small number, you know, g give it that. But if you don't know, you can just give it any combination of numbers and it'll start to guess and check from there. So in this case, you want to go right shift numeric solve and you want to go to the bottom. You want to do this M solve thing. If you press that, it'll start to guess things and it'll stop once it finds an answer. On the computer, it happened pretty quick. That, that was pretty good. On the calculator, it's quite a bit slower. It, it's pretty brutal. But I mean, some like as I said, this there's pretty much no other way of doing it except for this this method method here. Thanks for watching.